Today on Vital Insights. Obviously, uh, one of the most critical you know, aspects of digital health and remote patient monitoring is the data that's collected and, being, and having it be meaningful. Welcome to an episode of Vital Insights, a podcast series focused on thought leaders and healthcare providers who are working to transform the way we care for patients now and in the future. So Terry, in the world of remote or virtual care, there's one thing that's of huge importance, and that's the ability of healthcare providers to rely on the data they're receiving as being accurate. If the data is inaccurate, the whole foundation of the solution falls apart. So let's talk about how manufacturers can ensure their data represents an an accurate picture of patient health. By way of framing this issue, I know that you have history with patient data collection with respect to blood pressure. Can you talk about that and what issues you saw come up there? Sure, sure, Liz. That's um, obviously uh, one of the most critical you know, aspects of digital health and remote patient monitoring is the data that's collected and being in having it be meaningful and when we talk about data standardization uh, and about the validity of data really um, you know for a caregiver to use the data they have to one understand where it came from that it's been validated against some standard and that it's been validated in a clinical setting so that they know that it's um, meaningful and, and useful and accurate. And so, you know, from a standpoint of my experience at, with blood pressure at, at A&D, obviously that is really one of the key areas of focus on. Like our reputation in the industry was all around the... Um, accuracy and validity and the quality of our measurements and uh, you know in in providing clinical data there's uh, many many ways that one can go wrong and even in uh, providing a um, uh, an FDA regulated device I mean there's really two components to to um, you know, building, commercializing, a a sensing device for vital signs. I mean, the first part is to to develop it and get it cleared by a regulated body like the the FDA or, uh, you know, depending on the country, country that you're going after. The second one is to have it be validated clinically by a third party. And more and more... Um, you know, countries are requiring both, both, uh, and often as part of uh, even passing, uh, you know, the uh, regulatory clearance. And so if you look at a device, it's, um, you know, any kind of sensing device, you're measuring basically an analog signal, and you've got some type of detector that's capturing that signal and digitizing it and the algorithms to do that. And really that's what you're looking at, the accuracy of, of picking up that signal, uh, convert, amplifying it and converting it to a digital signal and then um, you know, passing along to um, post-processing and ultimately into a monitor of some type to present to a clinician or to an individual. And so when you look at that, there's many, many way, different ways to do that. And uh, there's many, many different ways that that can go wrong as far as uh, a design standpoint. So really, when you're looking at, um, you know, comparing the accuracy of data, it really comes down to that signal path and the ability to make that stable across all, uh, you know, all the use settings from the the size and weight of the patient that you're looking at, the temperature, the um, and the stability of it during, uh, you know, shipping, handling, all those kind of things play into it. So, 
you know, the testing rigor that goes into it is, uh, is really what sets, um, you know, one manufacturer apart from another. And so that's, I mean, from an experience at A&D, that's really what set A&D apart from the masses was just the rigor that they put into that. Now, from a clinical standpoint, when you're looking at that data, I mean, the the physician that's looking looking at that data, it's very, very important that that comes back to they understand where that measurement was derived from and what it was measured against. And so when you look at data standardization, uh, you know, let's take activity trackers, for instance. Sure, I sure. think there's many, many different algorithms, many, many different ways to, to track that. If you bought, you know, five activity trackers, you'd probably get five different numbers of steps Absolutely. and different ways to derive it. And that's the kind of the perfect example of talking about data standardization. If you look at uh, blood pressure, you know, theoretically, you should be able to get within some relative range the same reading from one to another. And that really doesn't exist in a lot of uh, devices that aren't, that haven't gone through the rigor of a, you know, regulatory environment and this kind of third party clinical testing. So if, if healthcare providers, I mean, that's a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So if healthcare providers are looking to ensure that their data is accurate, do you have some advice for them? Like what top three questions would you tell them to ask a potential vendor? I think it's, uh, it really comes down to one, first and foremost, obviously what data are they generating? Right. But, but then the important part is, um, how is it being generated and, and how are they validating it? And I think the third part though really is has it been proven clinically I mean that's probably the most important in all of them just having um, regulatory clearance isn't always enough you should be asking them has it been validated clinically with a third party I think that's really those three things are the key what data is being generated how are you generating it? And then how have you validated it? That is perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk about data standardization. 